Hello everyone and welcome to game one of the 2018 World Chess Championship between Magnus Carlsen and Fabiano Caruana. Uh, the venue of the championship is Auburn College. Uh, for those of you who might want to come and uh, can't uh, locate it, uh, like myself, it's uh, actually Southampton Road 12. Uh, that's the address. Uh, it's really hard to, to find it. I found it in an article that was written uh, when they decided on the venue of the World Chess Championship match. Uh, now, uh, it's uh, really a crazy game, one you would not expect uh, from a round one World Chess Championship match, but uh, I'm sure you're all going to enjoy it. Uh, now, prior to this game, Carlsen and Caruana have played uh, several games, of course, in classical time format. Uh, out, of, uh, out of all the games they have played in classical time format, uh, Carlsen has won 10 games, Fabiano won, the, uh, won 5 games, and 18 games were drawn. So uh, it's very interesting how this game will turn out and also a very interesting aspect uh, is that uh, Carlsen uh, could choose uh, whether he wants white pieces or the black pieces uh, in the first game and he chose the black pieces and with this he kind of announced that he immediately wants to fight so uh, we're, we're definitely going to see what happened. Uh, like I said, sorry about not posting the video yesterday, uh, I had to go from Heathrow to, to Auburn College and it's uh, it's a one hour drive uh, so when everything was over i couldn't even uh, wait there for the uh, for the game to finish as it lasted over six hours so when i got back heathrow also a one hour drive it was already past 11 pm and uh, the the trip really took a toll on me i decided it was better to show you the game yesterday after i've had my rest and prepared everything properly uh, including the photos which are compliments of Niki Riga, including these two profile photos, a very nice photo of Caruana uh, from the press conference and a very nice photo of Carlsen from the actual game yesterday. Uh, now, if you've already seen the game, I'm sure that's fine. There are plenty of uh, great uh, <laughs> and by far better uh, videos than this one you are watching. But for those of you who have for some reason decided to wait for my showing, uh, I would like to congratulate you for being an excellent subscriber. Now, let's check out some of the photos before we check out the actual game. So here we have a very nice photo of Caruana, it's from from yesterday, uh, preparing uh, to make his first move. Uh, and uh, very interestingly, here you have Woody Harrelson alongside uh, FIDE president Arkady Dvorkovic. Uh, it's, uh, it's not a rare occasion that Woody will show up for a chess game, especially for such a big chess event. Uh, and he was invited here to make the first move for uh, the player having the white pieces. And also, uh, the next photo you will see is uh, one of the greatest photos, I believe, ever taken in, in chess championships. Uh, here you have a, a photo of Woody uh, playing the wrong move. Uh, because he asked uh, Fabiano, which move do you want to play? And uh, Fabiano said E4, <laughs> but Woody heard D4, and he actually, well, first he knocked over Caruana's king, and only <laughs> only after that he played the D4, the wrong move. And then Caruana had to ask the arbiter uh, whether... Uh, he can take the move back uh, and play, of course, e4, and of course the arbiter allowed it. I mean, you're not just going to play a move because Woody played it. Uh, but uh, Woody really, really had a good laugh uh, regarding <laughs> this whole situation. Uh, and there you have Carlsen. Uh, he was also very uh, troubled by that d4 idea. But then when he saw e4, then uh, everything was uh, all right. Uh, uh, then you have uh, Woody was, of course, invited uh, to the official stream uh, that uh, was run by uh, Judith Polgar and Anna Rudolph. Also, Daniel King uh, joined them at uh, on occasions. And Woody also gave his uh, opinions uh, on the position that was currently on the board uh, between Carlson and Caruana. Uh, also, here is a very nice photo of me and Daniel King. Uh, during his break, I managed to, uh, to, <laughs> to catch up with him, have a few words, and Nikki was just in the vicinity, so she took this very nice photo. photo. Uh, very happy about that. And here is a photo uh, of Richard Kahn, myself, and Woody Harrelson uh, before the game actually started. And it's also a very nice uh, story I would like to share. Uh, as um, uh, when I got there, uh, I didn't even notice that, uh, that Richard and uh, Woody were there. Uh, as they were like uh, all the way back in the corner playing their game, uh, Woody was defending a very difficult position of the Banco Gambit, uh, and it was actually Richard who approached me, he said, uh, Antonio, it feels like uh, I know you for a very long time, uh, I've been watching your videos for a whole year, then he introduced me to Woody, and uh, we had a couple of words, uh, I asked him uh, about carnage, is it happening or, or what not, uh, he was uh, very affirmative, and uh, well, uh, it, it was a it was a very enjoyable experience uh, to say the least, and uh, he he Woody really had a lot of questions. He stayed uh, not not up uh, up up until the absolute end, uh, but he did say stay some six hours um, uh, for this game, 
And uh, he also had some very mm, uh, interesting questions like what is time control, what is this, what is that, and uh, Richard actually ex explained it uh, extremely thoroughly. So, you know, really, really nice to see when, when someone, uh, you know, with his background is, is so interested in chess and... Uh, and shows up uh, to an event like this. Uh, but that being said, uh, a lot of useful links will be in the description do uh, below. Be sure to follow Nikki Riga on all, her, all, all of her social media. Uh, links to that will be in the description below as well. Now let's check out this very nice game. Uh, Caruana has the white pieces and he opens with not d4, the move Woody played, but rather e4. And okay, uh, we have c5 by Carlsen, uh, he already uh, wants a fight as he did, did, did choose the black pieces for game 1 and he goes for the Sicilian. Uh, we have knight to, th knight to f3, knight to c6 and bishop to b5, the Nizhmedinov Rosolimo attack. And uh, it's very interesting, they will follow up to, up to move 7, they will follow a game they played um, in the 2015 Tata Steel Chess Tournament, uh, which Carlsen won with the black pieces uh, to a brilliant extent, but here it's actually Carlsen who the first from the variation played in 2015. Uh, we have g6, the same as was played then, bishop captures, d captures, this is the standard theory of this opening, uh, d3, bishop to g7, Fiancat wing the dark square bishop, h3, uh, a nice move, taking away the g4 square for Carl's, from Carlsen's bishop. Uh, knight to f6, and here we have knight to c3. And here in 2015, uh, Carlsen proceeded with a b6, and then the game continued the uh, bishop to e, uh, e3, e5, uh, where, of course, the e5 pawn cannot be captured. If you capture it, the knight captures on e4, opens up an attack against the knight on e5, and so on, and so on. Uh, but uh, here it was actually Carlsen who, instead of b6, now went knight to d7. Uh, now, the c5 pawn is protected like in the b6 variation, but now also it comes with a much greater control of the e5 square, and also the bishop is now free to roam uh, the board. Uh, we have bishop to e3. Uh, Caruana was not obviously prepared for this move. Maybe he was, but he did take some four minutes. This is the first uh, thinking time of the game, this bishop to e3 move. Uh, Carlsen continues with e5. We have castles, and now Carlsen again goes b6 but it did take him some six minutes for this move uh, as uh, the other moves Carlsen played relatively quickly so i don't think uh, this um, is a new position for him i think he actually came very much prepared and it was uh, just like a botvinnik moment where he takes six minutes to think about a move he already prepared uh, but okay uh, knight to h2 here Caruana took 18 minutes for this idea because he really has to figure out uh, how to approach this uh, because you have to uh, consider a lot of things. So how will Black play this? Will he castle? Will f5 come at some point? Uh, and whatnot. So he decides uh, to go for this plan knight to h2 and f4 to challenge this e5 pawn. And to open up the f-file for his rook, uh, well, he will uh, uh, develop the queen at some point, and he will definitely double rooks on the f-file. Uh, so knight to h2, 18 moves for this move, 18 minutes for this move, sorry. Uh, we have knight to f8, uh, uh, getting the knight uh, uh, to f8, uh, so the bishop can also come into the game. Uh, we have f4 by Caruana as planned. This was, uh, it took Caruana some 12 minutes for this move. So basically, for this knight to h2 move followed by f4, it took Caruana half an hour. Uh, and okay, we have e captures on f4, we have rook captures on f4, and now bishop to e6, developing the bishop, uh, which is a, a very nice square for the bishop, as you know that white will most likely double rooks on the f-file, and the bishop on e6 will serve as a huge protection uh, to this uh, f7 pawn. And since Caruana does not have a light square bishop, uh, Carlsen's uh, bishop pair will definitely uh, be a powerful team. Uh, also, instead of this bishop to e6 move, you don't really gain anything by by attacking this rook here with the bishop to h6 or bishop here. Uh, you, white will simply move the rook, uh, and even exchanging dark square bishops does not really work for black. For example, captures, captures. Uh, now your pawns are on light squares, you have a light square bishop and you have some dark square weaknesses, so not really gaining anything here. Uh, after knight to f8, we have f4, like planned. Uh, e captures on f4, rook captures on f4, and bishop to e6, we already mentioned that, and now rook goes back to f2, you don't want to leave it uh, on f4 to, so Carlsen can attack it with the bishop, so, you know, better to be safe. Uh, we have h6, uh, taking away the g5 square from uh, Caruana's pieces, but also in some variations preparing g5. So now, as h6 uh, is a potential target, Caruana uses it to develop his queen with an attack uh, against this pawn. Not even, okay, uh, so for now it's defended twice, but, you know, still have to keep a, uh, keep an eye on it. 
uh, and G5 by Carlson. Uh, when the, when everyone uh, in the hall saw G5, it was a, a really nice moment. Everyone said, "Oh yeah, something is definitely happening here," and uh, it definitely is because uh, White already castled uh, King side. Carlson's king is still in the middle, but there is no real way for Caruana to take advantage of this. You're not going to do anything alongside the semi-open F file as Carlson controls it very nicely, and uh, there's really no way for you to execute a central breakthrough here. Uh, so, uh, rook a to f1, doubling up on the f file, and here we have queen to d6. Uh, Carlsen now develops the queen and prepares the castle queenside, so now the other rook can come into the game as well. Uh, and here, uh, Caruana took some, again, uh, 16 minutes for his next move. He goes knight to g4. And, uh, yeah, it, I mean, it does require a lot of uh, thinking as, uh, well, uh, what happens if h5 is played, for example, attacking this knight. Uh, sure, if you go back, then comes g4, black is breaking through, most likely black will win this game, as if you open, if you <laughs> open up uh, his king side, it will be very hard to hold this. Uh, but the problem is, after a move like that, after knight to g4, if you go like this, uh, then you have this in between e5, attacking the queen, uh, and also now you will be able to capture on g5, knight to f6 is an idea, so uh, if, the, if the queen moves, then you get knight to f6 check, captures, captures, and here white will definitely be better. Uh, as uh, you will be able to capture here, even if uh, g4 is played, you can block it with h4, so n nothing dangerous is happening here. Uh, so, okay, after knight to g4, we have queenside castle by Carlsen, uh, and now comes knight to f6. Uh, an excellent square for the knight, of course, uh, Carlsen is uh, reluctant to capture the knight, uh, you don't want the rook to infiltrate on f6, uh, a very nice dark square, you're not going to be able to kick it away. Uh, so, knight to d7, challenging Caruana's strong knight on f6, and now knight to h5. Uh, Caruana goes for Carlsen's bishop. Uh, but, bishop to e5, and now, again, we have this very nice relationship between a bishop and a knight. Uh, the bishop is controlling all of the squares the knight can use to, uh, to retreat, so there are no possible retreats here. Uh, and, oh, it's uh, very hard for white to actually find a move. Uh, here, okay, you could uh, go for some uh, A4 ideas, uh, wa play a waiting move, uh, prevent some future B5 uh, and whatnot, but uh, Caruana decides to go for the immediate G4. Uh, now this knight uh, here is protected and also, uh, well, you don't want to play a slow move and allow Carlsen to break through with F5. So now uh, Caruana is definitely controlling the F5 square immensely. This is definitely now a, a Caruana square. Uh, but uh, it comes with the different problems here. Carlsen immediately played f6 as the knight on h5 still has nowhere to go. The bishop and queen are uh, very nicely controlling uh, the g3 square. The f4 square is very nicely uh, controlled by the pawn. Uh, so uh, Carlsen's plan is bishop here and capturing the knight. He wants to double these pawns and then the queen will perhaps be able to... Uh, at some point play something like queen e6, queen captures on h3 and so on. Uh, but okay, b3, not allowing this a2 pawn to become a target, uh, so the knight now can move, but also not allowing some sneaky ideas like c4. Uh, bishop to f7, attacking the knight, and here we have knight to d1 by Caruana. Uh, here, uh, the engine's evaluation gives uh, this as a huge, huge advantage for black, uh, and here, definitely, Carlsen was considering it, most likely, as he took some 10 minutes for his next move. Uh, he goes for a very nice pawn sacrifice with knight to f8. Uh, but uh, a seemingly deadlier idea was queen to e6. Now the threat is the very simple uh, bishop captures uh, here on h5. Uh, and after pawn recaptures, then, of course, the queen will already be eyeing the h3 pawn. Uh, so... Uh, this was not played, but it would be very uncomfortable for, for white here. White would have to play something like knight g7, and then uh, after queen e7, it would be a very awkward square for the knight. Uh, but okay, uh, after this knight to d1, we have knight to f8 by Carlsen, offering the f6 pawn, and Caruana captures it. We have knight captures on f6, and now, of course, not capturing with the bishop and allowing this uh, rook to infiltrate, but rather knight to e6. Now uh, Carlsen wants to take advantage of this beautiful f4 square for his knight. Uh, knight back to h5, and this is where Caruana really gives Carlsen the momentum he needed. Instead of this knight to h5 move, uh, Caruana misses the, 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 well, not the deadly, but uh, uh, the equalizing move, knight to d7. 
Uh, now this comes with a double attack against the bishop on f7 and also it comes uh, as an attack against the bishop on e5. So here if you capture it then simply rook can capture on f7 and all is well here for white. Your rooks are nicely doubled on the f file. Uh, and if not, after knight to d7, you could go bishop to f4, not allow this knight to capture the bishop, uh, but then knight can simply go back to f6 as the bishop is no longer controlling the f6 square. And if you repeat something like bishop to g3, attack the rook, rook f3, bishop goes back, now you can repeat knight to d7 and we go around. Uh, so a very nice move this knight to d7 for Caruana, but instead he decides to go for knight to h5. And okay, Carlson grabs it, bishop captures, pawn captures, and now comes knight to f4. An excellent square for the knight, the knight is just a monster here, uh, already attacking the h3 pawn, threatening check to capture the rook, uh, so you definitely want to remove it, uh, which Caruana does. Bishop captures, uh, pawn captures, uh, interestingly, bishop captures seems also like a very nice move, uh, but the problem is after white moves the queen as it's attacked, uh, you can no longer ever move your bishop because you would unleash the two rooks uh, onto the black position. You can never push g4 or push any of the pawns on the king side because your bishop becomes vulnerable. Uh, and of course, there's really uh, no way to, to, to break through here. It's actually white who would have the advantage here. So capturing with the g-pawn makes much more sense. Uh, f3 will be an idea in the future. It does open up the g-file for Carlson's rooks and uh, you know anything goes now. Uh, we have rook to g2, uh, blocking the, the g-file, but Carlsen goes rook h to g8 uh, nonetheless. Uh, and now comes queen to e2. Uh, also interesting idea is rook to g4, uh, saying that, okay, if you want to trade rooks, at least I will undouble my pawns, but it comes with a price. Uh, for example, rook captures, h captures, yes, you have fixed the structure of your pawns, but after rook to g8, attacking the g4 pawn, queen g2 defending, now comes queen to d7 with a double attack, uh, against the g4 pawn uh, with the threat of capturing white's queen, knight f2, uh, the only move that uh, defends the g4 pawn, now you have your knight and queen stuck here guarding the g4 pawn, and uh, you don't really have all that much to do here, you, you will just have to wait for the rest of the game to see how black will punish you and torture you. Uh, perhaps an engine would go for this, but a human would not. Uh, so, queen to e2. Uh, and now comes rook captures on g2. We have queen captures on, D2, uh, on g2, queen to e6 by Carlsen, uh, and here again we have knight to f2, uh, which is the only move that will eventually allow you to block the g-file. If you try to escape with the king, uh, then after rook to g8, attacking the queen, queen moves rook g3, it will be... Uh, yeah, white will not will no longer be able to hold this. So you do have to close up close up the g file. Knight to f2. Carlsen goes rook to g8, attacks the queen, and now knight to g4, uh, blocking off the g file, which is a very nice light square. As Carlsen has a dark square bishop, there's no real way to kick the knight away from there. Uh, but there are other uh, other available options for Carlsen here. Uh, he goes queen to e8, attacking the h5 pawn, and there is no good way to defend it. So, uh, in reality, his uh, pawn sacrifice was not really a, a sacrifice. Uh, we have queen to f3, and now comes queen captures on h5. There was no way to defend the pawn. Uh, now, you cannot capture on e5, of course, uh, as um, the, the knight is pinned from the rook. Uh, so, king to f2, Caruana on pins, we have bishop to c7, not allowing uh, Caruana to capture the bishop, uh, and here we have king to e2. This is uh, a move that, again, really allows Carlsen to, to create something beautiful. Uh, a move uh, that uh, Caruana probably should have played is e5, and a lot of people uh, mentioned this, uh, there was a lot of, uh, a lot of people were, were, were following uh, uh, the super the Norwegian supercomputer, as analysis uh, under mobile phones, and they said, uh, "Oh yeah, e5, such a such a monstrosity of a move, uh, really blocking the bishop, uh, and uh, you know threatening ideas like knight to f6. Black would not really have any good moves here after something like king b7. Knight f6 is coming, and okay, you don't have to trade queens. You have queen to h4, uh, but after king e2, rook g3, attacking the queen, you will be able to capture here. And after queen captures, rook captures, bishop captures on e5, you will have." Uh, rook here and now bishop captures on f6. Uh, rook captures and after rook captures on h3, uh, you would have this uh, position where Carlsen would be up a past pawn, a past h pawn, but with a very inactive king. Uh, it would be, it, it's very unlikely that you would be able to push here for anything. Uh, so instead of this king to e2, e5, a, an extremely strong move. Uh, I think Kasparov was um, 
was invited uh, for the St. Louis uh, Chess Club live coverage, and Kasparov also mentioned this idea, so everyone was really impressed how the old champion uh, found found a way out so so nicely. Uh, but okay, king to e2, and now Carlsen uh, really has an opportunity. He plays queen to g5. This is the strongest move, and in fact, by all standards, a winning move, because now white has nothing to play. e5 is now useless. If you play e5 now, then you've just moved the queen from the h file. h4, uh, h5 attacks the defender of the e5 square. You would either have to move the knight here or suffer terrible losses after you move the knight. Queen captures an e5 with check. Uh, this is over. Uh, but after queen to g5, uh, okay, and knight to h2, uh, played by Caruana, and it's interesting, this is move 33, so you need 7 more moves to reach time control, this is, uh, I, I think it was uh, at about this time, Woody asked, uh, what's this time time control thing, uh, and then Richard explained it very nicely to him, uh, but yeah, uh, here Caruana had like 6 minutes for the, for the next 7 moves, uh, or six moves as this is move 34 and uh, it's really intense such a such a crazy position with so little time on the clock it's uh, n just, I mean it's just not fair to chess uh, but okay uh, here Carlson goes uh, h5 and uh, this is one of the moments where uh, he also could have gone for queen to e5 and everyone was uh, waiting for him to go for queen to e5 uh, now the idea is uh, Rook to g3 is coming. If rook to g3 comes, it all hell will break loose. So queen f2 first getting uh, out of the um, out of the rook's way after the rook drops to g3. Uh, so now queen to b2, and now with the rook uh, raining down on you from one side and the queen uh, threatening to capture the entire queen side, uh, this will be this will be done for white. After king d1 defending, uh, now comes a b5. This is the move Carlson most likely missed. Uh, because it comes with uh, with uh, terrible threats uh, of, of e either c4 or bishop to a5 controlling this entire dark square diagonal and then queen b1 check would be uh, would be huge because you will be able to capture on c2 again with check and here it would be really hard for 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 white to deal with it after if you play something like queen captures on c5 uh, it it's doesn't work king b7 simply getting uh, the king to defend the c6 pawn uh, and now after you try to block the g file h4 h5 will be enough for black uh, after we move the knight here comes check king has to move and now of course you'll see it this is the the power of uh, of potential in the f pawn f3 check uh, the king is defending the rook on f1 king has to move queen captures it's all over uh, one of the one of the ideas but okay uh, Carlson goes h5 still doesn't change much, uh, takes away the g4 square from Caruana's knight, so you will never be able to close uh, the g file, uh, and here Caruana plays rook to f2, uh, and here we have queen to g1, also a possibility was queen g7, uh, queen g7 now with the idea that after black threatens to attack the queen side, white will try to defend it with queen h1 to flip over to the queen side, uh, queen b2 and now queen d1 defending the c2 pawn but now black can even capture on a2 but also you can infiltrate immediately with the rook rook to g3 now you're attacking the a2 pawn you're attacking the h3 pawn and after rook to f3 uh unfortunately this doesn't work uh but uh, you know feel free to pause the video here and figure out why this wouldn't work um for those of you who were able to do it, congratulations. Uh, rook to f3 does not work uh, for the following reasons. Those of you who found it, uh, you are an uh, excellent uh, analyst of uh, ideas that never happened uh, on the board. Uh, and for those of you who just want to enjoy the show, it's actually rook to g2 check. Uh, checking the king and attacking the knight. Rook blocks and <laughs> now comes rook captures on h2. It's a very nice move. Uh, rook captures and now f3 check will pick up the rook uh, as it opens up a discovered attack from the bishop to the rook. King will capture, bishop captures, black is up a piece winning the game. Uh, but okay, uh, instead of this idea queen g7 to here, uh, Carlsen goes queen to g1. And still, this is very much playable. Uh, knight to f1, uh, Caruana doesn't allow Carlsen to infiltrate uh, the queen side this way, so this is one of the reasons perhaps queen to g7 was better, as uh, uh, Caruana would not be able to prevent infiltration. And here Carlsen plays the absolute strongest move uh, that was suggested by the supercomputer Sese, uh, it is h4. So now rook to g3 uh, comes with, with uh, a very deadly threat. Uh, here, Caruana most likely should have played e5. At least uh, get some room, breathing space for his queen, open up an attack against the c6 pawn. Uh, but here, uh, Caruana actually played king to d2. He wanted to bring his king over to the queen side to be 
able to protect uh, the queen side with his king, but also to get away from all the action on the king side. Uh, and here it just uh, it just doesn't work. Uh, Carlson first plays king to b7, uh, and here we have c3. Uh, but now uh, bishop to e5 by Carlson. Uh, here again, Carlson didn't go for this b5 move. b5 seems to be a crucial move in all of these continuations. Uh, because now whatever white plays, and white really doesn't have any moves here, uh, something like king to c2, we have rook to g3, white has to wait for black to go rook g3, uh, now you will have to capture. Knight captures, and now after pawn captures attacking the rook, uh, rook moves, and now comes queen to a1. So queen will still uh, be able to attack the queen side. Uh, d4, uh, white has to make room for his king. Uh, queen captures with check, king d3, queen captures. On b3, white's position is falling apart. Uh, king has to run, queen c4 check, queen blocks, and now after queen to e6, uh, white is up the exchange, but this exchange really isn't doing anything. Uh, Carlsen has two protected pass pawns, uh, another pass pawn here. Uh, it, would be, it would be impossible to hold this for white. Uh, but okay, after c3, Carlsen doesn't go for b5, he goes for bishop to e5, he wants to pile up on the c3 pawn now. Uh, we have uh, king to c2, and now comes queen back to g7. Uh, this is move 39, uh, Caruana has a few seconds uh, to decide what to do here. His c3 pawn is attacked twice, and he has to make a move. He has a few more seconds uh, to reach time control, after that he will be awarded more time, of course, but it's a very important decision. And uh, uh, here, Caruana simply decided to go for knight to h2. He wanted to repeat, uh, in, uh, invite Carlsen to go back, queen g1, and try the same variation again. And uh, this was, in fact, the correct idea for Carlsen. Here, Carlsen allowed himself to go uh, deep into time trouble. He also had a few seconds here. I think he was down to, like, 10 seconds or even below 10 seconds uh, when he made his move. He decided to capture on c3 when, uh, in fact, he should have just repeated queen to g1. And then went for the same idea after Caruana blocks this, then go b5 and then go into the same variation that we've just mentioned. Uh, but it's a, I mean, it's a terrible choice to be, uh, to have to make uh, with, uh, uh, with a couple of seconds on the clock to reach time control, uh, Carlsen captured on c3. And now Caruana has this uh, freeing move. Queen captures on f4, now queen to f7 check is coming. Uh, bishop to d4. Uh, you don't want to allow uh, the trade of queens and the, the bishop to uh, stay vulnerable on c3. Uh, so Caruana simply played queen to f7. He uh, forced a trade of queens. And now after king a6, captures, captures. Uh, we have rook e2. Uh, rook f3 is not possible to defend the h3 pawn because rook g2 check would pick up the knight. Uh, so uh, instead we have rook e2. Uh, and now rook g3, going uh, after the h3 pawn. Uh, we have knight g4, and now rook captures on h3. So Carlsen still has a passed h pawn, uh, but it will be it will be it will be held to prove that this can be pushed to a win, and he will definitely put Caruana through hell. Uh, e5. Caruana does have a pass pawn himself, and of course pass pawns must be pushed, so he pushes it. Uh, we have rook f3. Carlsen has to hurry back with his rook to be able to stop the pass pawn. Uh, e6, rook f8, e7, rook to e8, and now comes knight to uh, h6. Uh, it, it's not possible to, to force the rook away from the e8 square, as the knight would need a couple of more moves, and uh, uh, the pawn on e7 is on a dark square. Uh, Carlsen has a dark square bishop, so he will definitely be able to attack it, which he will. Uh, h3, Carlsen also pushes his passed pawn. We have knight to f5, and now bishop to f6, not allowing knight d6. Now, uh, if the white uh, knight uh, moves, uh, Carlsen will simply capture the pawn. Uh, we have a3, and now b5. Finally, Carlsen does play b5, but it is uh, far too late for such activities. Uh, we have b4, uh, pawn captures, pawn captures, and here bishop captures on e7. A very nice move by Carlsen. Uh, now, of course, if you play rook captures, then rook captures, knight captures, you will no longer be able to prevent Carlsen's h1 from queening. Uh, so, after bishop captures on e7, knight captures, we have h2, uh, rook has to capture it, rook captures, rook captures, and now rook to h6, defending the c6 pawn, king blocks, and now Carlsen is still up a pawn, but uh, as you will see, uh, the game will go on for some three more hours, but uh, there is no way to, to do anything here, unfortunately, uh, for, for the world champion who uh, really missed a lot of chances here. Uh, but okay, king c3, rook d7, rook g6, uh, king to c7, rook to h6, 
uh, rook to d6, offering a trade of rooks. Of course, uh, white cannot um, indulge in this rook trading. Uh, rook to h8, and now rook to g6. Uh, rook to a8, attacking the pawn on a7, king defends. Rook goes back, we have rook to g5. Uh, rook to h7 check, king g6, and now rook to h6 check. Uh, rook to g1, trying to go behind the king, rook to c2. A uh, king to c2, not allowing it. Uh, rook f1, rook to g6, uh, rook to h1, and rook to f6. This is already move 67, so second time control has already been reached. Uh, rook to h8 and king to c3 here. Uh, Carlson knows that there is very, there are very little chances that he can actually push this for a win, but Fabi is lower on time. He does have some 8 minutes on the clock, so he might, uh, you know, if he gets into like a, a 1 minute where he really has to make some choices, then perhaps uh, there is, of course, a possibility of a blunder. Uh, rook to a8, now f4, uh, d4. Uh, we have rook to d8 and now uh, rook to h6. Rook to d7, uh, we have rook to, rook to g6. So white doesn't really have anything to do here. He will simply have to wait uh, what Carlsen can come up with. Uh, king to c7 and now rook to g5. Uh, we have rook to f6, rook to d6, rook to g8, rook to h6, and rook to a8, back attacking the a7 pawn. King, uh, uh, rook to h3, king to c2, rook to a3. Uh, and now king to b2, attacking the rook, and now rook to a4. Uh, king to c3, defending the pawns, and now a6. Uh, if you decided to play something like king b7, attack the rook, uh, and for example, after the rook moves, play a5, uh, okay, you will be able to capture here with white, rook captures, and then you will even have d5, and uh, now if you capture, then white will be able to recapture one of the pawns, and it will be a draw, and if you push the pawn, then white draws easily by simply uh, keeping on checking the black king, and if the black king approaches the c-file, then a nice check will win you the c-pawn, and again, it will be a draw. So no way to actually do any progress with any eventual a5 breakthroughs. Uh, a6 was played, uh, we have rook to h8, uh, rook to a3 check, king b2, rook g3, king c2, uh, rook to g5, we have rook to h6, uh, rook to d5, attacking the pawn, king defends, rook to d6, uh, of course avoiding the rook trade, uh, rook to g6, king to c2, now rook, uh, king back to b7, king c3, uh, rook g3 check, king c2, rook g1, uh, rook to h5, rook g2 check, king c3, uh, rook g3 check, king c2, rook to g4, king to c3, uh, king b6, rook h6, uh, rook g5 not allowing uh, white to push d5, of course, that would be very unfortunate for black, uh, rook to f6, now comes rook to h5, uh, rook to g6, rook back to h3 check, king c2, rook h5, king to c3, rook d5, uh, now rook goes back to h6, king c7, uh, rook h7 check, king, rook blocks, of course, you cannot trade, uh, rook d6, rook to h8, rook g6, rook to f8, uh, rook to g3 check, uh, king to c2, rook to a3, uh, we have rook checks, uh, king goes to d6, and now comes uh, rook to a7. Uh, finally, uh, Carlson's king is able to enter, enter the position, uh, but it will not... <laughs> Uh, it will not mean all that much. Uh, king to d5, we have uh, king to b2, and now comes rook to d3. Uh, if rook a4, then king, king to c3 will defend the pawns just as well. Uh, so instead, uh, we have rook to d3, now comes rook captures on a6, rook captures on d4, and now king to b3. Uh, rook to e4, king to c3. Uh, rook to c4 check, king blocks. Of course, you have to defend the b4 pawn. King d4, uh, we have rook to b6, king d3, rook to a6. Uh, rook to c2, now rook back to b6, uh, rook to c3 check, king b2, rook to c4, uh, king b3, king d4, rook to a6, king d5, and after rook to a8, uh, it was in this position on move 115 that they decided to draw this game. And uh, it's very interesting, uh, this is now the second longest game in a World Chess Championship match. The first one is still, I think, uh, game, game 7 in the 2014 match between Magnus Carlsen and Vishwanathan Anand. Uh, but, uh, you know, if he already pushed it uh, this long, uh, you know, he, he perhaps he could have pushed it a few more moves just to make it the longest game ever in a World Chess Championship match, you know, uh, just uh, putting it out there. 
Uh, but yeah, such a such an amazing game, especially for game one of any World Chess Championship match. Uh, really, Carlson came prepared. Uh, he already, you know, deferred from uh, a known line they, they played in uh, the Vikings at Tata Steel Chess Tournament in 2015. Then he created a lot of chances, but uh, he faced something that he said uh, in uh, plenty of interviews before the match that uh, he creates chances, but he's unable to capitalize on them. Uh, he he's no he says about himself that. Uh, he, he's no longer able, like some two years ago, to, to really push water out of any stone. So perhaps uh, it happened again in this game, but uh, I mean, Caruana is simply a monster defender. The, the positions he defended, uh, like like the one, you know, where, where <laughs> uh, Carlson said, uh, uh, quiet to the haters, also that was a really impressive position to defend. Uh, but yeah, uh, we do have one nice photo here. It's a photo of Carlson uh, after... Uh, the game from the press conference he has to attend one uh, after every game. Uh, you don't have to see the press conference, you can just look at this photo and you will know how Carl Carlson felt after this game. Uh, because uh, if he managed to win game one with the black pieces, it would be a huge blow to Caruana, not only uh, point-wise, but uh, it would be a huge psychological blow, uh, you know, uh, losing with the white pieces in game one. Uh, not not an easy thing to recover from, but who knows? Uh, he he's a young fellow at the top of his game. Maybe maybe it wouldn't really have that that kind of an effect on him. Uh, but yeah, that's uh, basically the game. I do hope you enjoyed it. There will be a lot of useful links in the description below, so feel free to check up on all of them. Uh, a lot of cool people to follow will also be in there. Uh, also, uh, I have to mention, do do follow Nikki Riga and on all, all of her social media uh, to have some excellent photos from this and every other uh, huge chess tournament. Uh, I would like to thank uh, Udo Brandt, uh, Ian, Sky Ian Sykes, uh, Given Manai, uh, Samuel DeRosso, and Larry Bowman for a contribution to my channel. Thank you a lot. I really appreciate it. Uh, as usual, you can check two of my previous videos here. Thank you all for watching, uh, and I will see you soon uh, with Game 2 of the 2018 World Chess Championship match. Uh, uh, hopefully, I will be able to do this one much sooner than I'm showing you Game 1. Uh, but for those of you who really have waited for my showing of Game 1, uh, once again, congratulations. Uh, you are an excellent subscriber. Thank you all, and I will see you soon.